Are you ready for one of the fanciest quant tricks and yet also one of the most simple? It's about three-dimensional Pythagoras. Now you might know about two-dimensional Pythagoras and if you don't, I'll give you a quick reminder, but this is dealing with cubes and cuboids. So it's three-dimensional Pythagoras and there's a different formula. Once I've covered the formula in this question, we'll do a harder example involving inscribed spheres and we'll talk about an additional shortcut that you can use to be even quicker. It's a really good trick, one of my favorites. Before I show you the trick, let's cover the type of question that can come up. It says, a shipping container is in the shape of a cuboid with a width of 10, a height of 10, and a length of 20. What is the greatest distance between any two points on the surface of the container in feet? Now we don't need a diagram for this question, but I'll do a diagram just so you can see what's going on a bit more easily. Once you know the trick, you won't actually need a diagram. So I've drawn it out here. By the way, to draw a cuboid, just draw a rectangle, then draw a rectangle behind it overlapping and then join up the corners. And then you'll have a nice three-dimensional cuboid. And I've labeled the sides 20, 10, and 10. Now, what are they talking about when they say the greatest distance between any two points on the surface of the container? Well, there are many points on the surface of the container, but the two that are gonna be furthest apart are the two opposite corners, sometimes called vertices. A vertex is a corner. And if we look at the two furthest apart vertices, that would be A and B. Obviously you could pick another pair, but it will be that three dimensional diagonal going right through the center of that cuboid. That would be the greatest distance between any two points on the surface. A is a point on the surface, B is a point on the surface, and the distance between them is the greatest possible distance between any two points on the surface. Now, many students would struggle to work out that distance, or they would use a quite convoluted method. Maybe they'd use two-dimensional Pythagoras to work out the length between A and the top right corner of that front surface, and then they'd do an extra bit of Pythagoras to work out other lengths and hypotenuses, but that's quite hard. So I'm here to give you the shortcut. First, what is basic Pythagoras for those who don't know? Well, in two-dimensional Pythagoras, it's just a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where in a normal triangle, you have two shorter sides and a hypotenuse. Obviously, it only works with right angle triangles. You square one of the short sides, square the other short side, add them up, and then equal that to the hypotenuse squared. And those will always equal. So you can work out a missing side, for example. But here's the trick. With three-dimensional Pythagoras, it's actually the same thing as I've written just with one extra letter. So three-dimensional Pythagoras is a squared plus b squared plus c squared, where that's the width, length, and height in any order, by the way, equals d squared. What's the d stand for? It's the three-dimensional hypotenuse, or you can think of it as the diagonal distance, the three-dimensional diagonal distance across the cube through the center, not along the surface, right through the center from A to B. So to repeat, A, B, and C are your width, height, and length in any order, so your height, length, and width, for example. And your D is that three-dimensional diagonal. We're not dealing with a triangle anymore, we're dealing with a cross-section of the surface all the way from A to B, that three-dimensional diagonal. And with that formula, as you can see, it's very reminiscent of the original Pythagorean formula. We can instantly work out that greatest distance without using multiple sets of normal Pythagoras. Here, for example, we could simply do 20 squared plus 10 squared plus 10 squared. That's the width, height, and length equals D squared, which obviously we don't know. That's what we're trying to find out. Adding those up, you get 600 equals d squared. Square rooting both sides. Obviously in the GRE, you can use a calculator or in the GMAT, you can't use a calculator. So we would have to simplify that root. To simplify roots, by the way, you find the biggest square number that goes into the number that you're square rooting. And the biggest square number that is a factor of 600 is 100. So we split up 600 as 100 times six and the square root of 100 is 10. We can't square root the 6, but we can square root the 100, so it's 10 root 6. 
Now, I think I've covered that in another video. If I haven't, I will do a video on that. That's a separate topic for another day. Either way, using this three-dimensional Pythagorean formula, we have worked out the three-dimensional diagonal. We've worked out the D. In other words, we've answered the question, we found the greatest distance between any two points on the surface of the container is 10 root six. Answer B. At this point, you might be thinking, amazing trick, but I think I get it now. Don't really need to learn anymore. Well, what about a harder example? For example, this one. We've got a sphere inscribed within a cube. And then the question is approximately what percent greater is the greatest distance between any two vertices of the cube and the diameter of the sphere? Harder question. And even if you get it right, using my method, some students would take two minutes and I've got an additional shortcut to give you where we can reduce that to something like 30 seconds. So what do we do? Let's explain it. First, I'll do a diagram for illustration. For this kind of hard level of question, I might even recommend that you do a diagram as well. For the previous type of question, we didn't even need a diagram. We just plug it into the formula. But for this type of question, we can use a diagram. Okay, how do we do this question? Let's visualize it. And we've got this sphere inscribed within a cube. Inscribed means touching the edges. So that sphere neatly fits inside, touching the edges. Now, how do we find the greatest distance between any two vertices of the cube? Well, we could just use the formula that I've shown you in the previous question. We've got our width, height, and length. Well, actually we don't. And that's the first thing I'd say. You'd need to make up a number. Here, you'd make up a side length of one, because it doesn't matter what number you pick, so we might as well pick an easy length. And at this point, you could use that three-dimensional formula that I gave you a second ago. And you're probably thinking, well, that would only take 45 seconds. What's the problem? How can there be a shortcut? Well, I'm here to tell you that you can know the answer in five seconds. Because in another video, I've talked about how the diagonal of a square is simply root two times one of the sides. But now I'm gonna tell you that the diagonal of a cube is root three times one of the sides. And if you know that, that the three-dimensional diagonal of a cube, specifically a cube, not a cuboid like in the last question, specifically a cube, the diagonal of a cube is root three times one of the sides, well, we get the answer instantly, right? If we make up a side length of one, well then root three times that side length of one is just root three. So we know the diagonal of the cube, the greatest distance between any two points, that three-dimensional cross-section is just root three. No working out, instantly the answer. And that's the additional shortcut I wanted to show you. But of course, I will also show you how you can use the formula I just showed you in the previous question. If the height, width, and length are all one, we can plug that into the formula. One squared plus one squared plus one squared equals D squared. So three equals D squared, and D is root three. So we get the same answer. That three-dimensional diagonal is root three. That's the greatest distance between any two vertices of the cube. Remember, vertices means corners. Now, what's the actual answer to the question though? What's the diameter of the sphere? Because we need to compare that distance of root three to the diameter of the sphere. Well, the diameter of the sphere in this case is just equal to the side length of the cube, which we made up as one. So we know instantly that the diameter of the sphere is one. Now let's compare those two numbers. Root three, that's the greatest distance between any two vertices, the three-dimensional diagonal. Root three, if we use a calculator, is 1.73. Or you can know it off by heart as being very close to 1.7. And the diameter of the sphere is one, using our made up numbers. And therefore, the root three is 73% greater than the one. So the answer is D. But to summarize, there's two tricks you've learned now. Three-dimensional Pythagoras for any cuboid, including a cube, you do the width squared plus the height squared plus the length squared and equal it to that D squared and then work out D. Or specifically for a cube, you can remember that that three-dimensional diagonal is root three times one of the sides. Now you've learned both tricks, I just wanted to have a quick word about the origin of this formula. The A squared plus B squared plus C squared equals D squared. Instead of telling you, which would take 10, 20 minutes to tell you with different diagrams, I wanna set you a challenge to see if you can derive that formula. And if anyone does it in the comments, I will reply to them. 
And basically, the only hint I'll give is that to work out that three-dimensional diagonal formula, you need to use normal Pythagoras once and then normal Pythagoras again to work out the diagonal. And that's the origin of the formula. If anyone manages to do it in the comments, I will pin that comment. So there's a little challenge. But for the rest of you who are not as interested in the origin, you've now learned the two tricks. And if you didn't know them before, please do leave a like and a comment to let me know. See you in the next video.